Welcome to the Mighty Emotions Podcast. I'm your host, Giselle. I'm a certified emotions coach, and I teach you how to respond better to your emotions so you can feel better in your life. My mission is to show you how to work with your emotions to become more emotionally resilient. Your emotions are not designed to overpower you. They're designed to empower you. On this podcast, I share what our emotions are, how to understand them and work with them, and the tools you need to reclaim your power and get unstuck from emotional pain so you can find fulfillment in your life again. I'm so glad you're here. Now let's get into the episode. Welcome to another episode. I am so happy to be with you today. I hope that whenever you're listening to this, you are feeling grounded and calm. And if you're not, let's just take a minute to pause and drop into our bodies and notice the sensations that are there. Where is there any kind of discomfort, any kind of physical pain, tension? It's so important that we we do this periodically and that we make the the time and it doesn't take a lot of time. I mean, in my client sessions, whenever there's big surge of energy coming up, I always take a moment to pause. We always pause and drop in and let ourselves actually experience the sensations in our bodies. We typically don't pay much attention to our bodies until there's something wrong. And even when we're really conscientious and very, you know, focused on our wellness and very conscious of, you know, working out or eating well or whatever the case may be, we tend to just really put a lot of pressure on our bodies to do a lot of work for us. And that's kind of what I want to talk about today, because I don't think that there's enough conversation around how our emotions and our ability to process them and understand them and work with them impacts our body, our physical body. But it's so important, right? It's so, so important that we know that the emotions are happening in our bodies. And if you listen to my podcast, you'll know that I talk about that, right? Because it is the physical sensations within our body that are our emotions. And there's a connection between the energy centers in our body and where certain emotions manifest. So like shame, for example, guilt, that can manifest in kind of the lower regions and tension, anxiety, that's more so a feeling, it's more so in the mind, and it'll manifest more in the upper regions of the body. So there's there's that connection. But I want to talk today just briefly as a gentle reminder that Feeling exhausted is connected to our emotional management practices, right? Because to suppress our emotions, to not allow that energy to flow, to not work with our bodies, to let that emotion move through us and flow through us is a lot of work for our body. Like to suppress an emotion is an enormous amount of work for our body. And it's kind of like, our computers, right? We're using our computers all the time and we're dealing with the interface of the computer, but the computer is running so many programs in the background and so much code in the background and doing all this work in the background that we're not seeing when we're just dealing with the tabs and the screens. And I mean, unless you're an engineer, right? You don't realize that there's this massive amount of underground work that's going on. And it's the same with our body, our subconscious, There's a massive amount of work that our subconscious, which is housed in the body, is constantly doing. Like we don't have to think about our blood circulating and our air, the oxygen circulating and and all the systems that are working in the background and our emotions are the same, right? When that emotional energy is created in the body from the subconscious, it takes an enormous amount of energy to suppress that and to repress that. So every time we avoid how we're feeling, we try to switch gears, we go into our mind instead, we, our body is doing so much background work. And the reason that that is important for us to remember is because physical exhaustion is a byproduct of that. So 
there is a direct connection between feeling physically exhausted, feeling chronically fatigued, and suppressing our emotions. A direct correlation, right? Again, the amount of energy that it requires for our body to hold on to those emotions and do all the other work that it's doing is going to deplete us physically. And there's a lot of ways that we can hack You know, we use a lot of things to hack our bodies and really it's just us tricking our minds to, you know, having a different perception. The body is still doing so much work. That's why we can we can do all these things to change our moods and hack our moods. I was talking recently in my Twitter space with my friend Tyler, Ty the Wordsmith on Instagram. Follow her, check her out on Twitter as well. Um, And I'll leave the link to that that conversation in the description if you want to hear it. But I was talking about the difference between emotions and feelings and moods and how we use so many things in our society to hack our mood. Like we take supplements, we drink coffee, we maybe use drugs and alcohol, we use music. There's so many different ways we can hack our mood, which is our our state of mind, our general outlook. It's just like a, a vague, overarching way that we're feeling generally. Um, and we do all these things to hack it, right? Because underneath it, we're not processing a lot of emotions and feelings. And so it's easier to just kind of hack our state of mind and the state that we're in. But it's not changing the fact that our body is running all these programs in the background. Our body is doing all this work in the background. And this is where burnout comes in, right? Like burnout is even going beyond just physical fatigue. It's physical and mental fatigue. It's just completely being depleted. And the reason that we arrive at a state of burnout is because we've been acting in misaligned ways constantly, just doing things that aren't aligned, not getting our needs met, going, 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 deprioritizing ourselves, neglecting our emotional wellness, like pushing that all aside. But our body is still having to pick up the slack, right? We can't escape it in our bodies. Like we can't escape it physically. Even if we can change our mind, we can distract ourselves, we can avoid in all these ways mentally, we can take all these different actions, right? Because action comes from that mental place, that that mental direction is, you know, when I say direction, I mean like the orders that we give, like take action and our body moves. It's still doing, it's still running the code in the background. It's still doing all the work of holding on to the emotions that we're not We're not allowing ourselves to process and allowing our bodies to process. And if you work with me or you're familiar with my work, you know that the first step is always to get into the body. The first step is always to get into the body and allow the body to process that energy. Because again, what I'll remind you is that the body is such a powerful, amazing tool, but it's slow. It's slower than the mind. The mind is so much faster than the body. That doesn't make it superior, by the way. It serves a different purpose, right? But the body is this slow, gentle, ancient technology that we have. All of us. It keeps us alive even when we're not consciously directing it to. Like it's it's holding us. It's the vehicle, right? And so when it comes to processing our emotions, we can't process our emotions the same way we process our thoughts, not to the same speed, right? Again, the mind operates different from the body and we have to learn how to collaborate with them, but it's about giving our body the time it needs, the grace it needs, the stillness it needs, or the movement, if that's going to help to get that energy moving through our body, and actually getting those emotions processed. Like we don't have to do the work, right? We our body is doing the work, but we have to allow our body to do it. We have to p- give ourselves permission to slow down and let our bodies do that work of processing those emotions. And it's also important to remember that we need safety, we need a safe container, we need a safe situation, circumstance, however you want to phrase it to process our emotions like we can't be processing them in the moment that we're you know that we're activated however this is why it's so important at the end of your day whether it's in the shower whether it's when you get into bed 
to be with yourself. When I say be with yourself, I mean be with your physical body. Slow down. This is your opportunity to let the day be processed. All the experiences you had, all the data your subconscious collected, all the emotions that you that arose because of, you know, was your day aligned or misaligned? Were you doing a lot of things that you didn't want to be doing? Were you draining a lot of your energy in that way? This is the time that you take once a day to let that be digested and integrated and processed so that you can then use your mind to start forming new stories, new narratives, new ways of seeing the world, new actions, new habits, all the planning stuff that happens that the mind is so great for, that happens after the body does the work. That happens after we let the body process those experiences and emotions. And then we allow ourselves to see where we need to shift things in our situation so that our needs are getting met more regularly, so that the body isn't having to do this constant overwhelming job of processing these emotions, right? Like our emotions are only going to arise if our needs aren't getting met. And the more we can be proactive about that, the less of these emotional responses we're going to have. We're still going to have feelings. We're still going to have, you know, ways that we interpret our experiences. But on a physical level, we allow our bodies to have such an easier job when we know how to tune in, know how to work with that emotional energy and let our body process it, regulate our nervous system, regulate our emotions, however you want to call it, those somatic practices of slowing down and being with ourselves is the first step. And then using our mind to problem solve and identify where we need to make changes, where things need to be shifted and more aligned, that is the, that is the order of operations. Because if not, our body is just running, 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 running until we break down. Until we break down. And I know what it's like to experience this. My clients have come to me. They typically come to me from a state of being so burnt out, having this adrenal shutdown, having this chronic fatigue. And they're like, what? Why? How did I get here? What happened? It's like, You were living your life while your body was just trying to keep up and it was doing way too much work and it had to break down. Like there is a limit, right? So this is again why I stress that it's so important that we learn emotional regulation. We learn how to collaborate with our emotions. We learn how to understand our needs and getting them met because that is going to change the dynamic that we have with our body in our mind. It's going to change the way that we interact with the world. It can't prevent certain experiences from happening, of course, right? But it's about knowing how to process and integrate and resolve those experiences, right? It's the same way when we eat food. You can't just eat, 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 eat nonstop. At a certain point, you need to stop eating and let your body digest it. And we have to let our bodies digest our experiences as well, and the emotions and the stories that come up as a result of those experiences. It's the same, it's the same process on a physical, emotional level, giving our body like the space and the time that it needs to process and integrate. So I hope that something in there helped you. I'm not a doctor right? I'm not a medical doctor. I'm not a medical professional. I will say that, but I am a human being who has lived long enough to experience emotions, to experience exhaustion, to experience emotional suppression and avoidance and the physical ramifications of that. And so I can speak from my experience and the experience of my clients working with me and how they they come back to this rejuvenated state when they understand that holding on to that emotional energy is only going to drain them and deplete them. And they learn to process them and learn how to work with the body and work with the mind. And all of a sudden they regain so much energy and so much vitality and so much excitement for life because their system isn't overwhelmed and overloaded constantly. Sorry if you can hear a siren out there. (laughs) 
anyway, I just wanted to record this episode and leave you with that message because it's such a beautiful reminder to just take care of ourselves. It's such a beautiful reminder that slowing down and giving our body the care that it needs is also about helping it process those emotions so that it's not doing that that overwhelming job constantly in the background while we're just off to the races with the mind, right? I I love you for listening to the podcast. I'm so grateful that you support this show and you support my work and that you support yourself by learning things like this and taking this action, whether you become a client of mine or not. You just being here is such a gift and I really appreciate it. Everyone who shares this show, everyone who sends me messages and lets me know how much they love this show and how much they love the work that I'm doing, I really, really am grateful for you. So I hope that this week, after you listen to this episode, you can take a minute to be with yourself, drop into your body, and let it let it reveal to you the wisdom and the love that it has for you, keeping you alive every day, processing your emotions every day, doing all that work in the background, just spend a moment of gratitude with your body and give thanks for for all the work that it does for you. All right, I'll see you in the next episode. Be well. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode. It would mean so much if you could subscribe, leave a review, share with your friends and family, and let me know what you think by going to my Instagram at mighty underscore emotions and connecting with me and letting me know what you loved about today's episode. It really means a lot that you support this podcast and I love coming to you each week with a new episode. So be sure to subscribe, let me know what you think and take care of yourself.